You see, these women, these lesbian women here, that they call themselves ministers, that's what they're doing when they're lying with each other. They're lying with a beast. Now, I'm not just saying this. Let's go to the book of Jude and see what the book of Jews has to say about that. In Jude, verses 1 through 16, we read this. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Now you've heard uh, before we talked about when I got in that debate with that apostate preacher who had gone on and uh, he had said that Jesus died for everybody. Everybody he died for. Who can tell me that he didn't die for everybody? And so when I tried to correct him, and I tried to do it in a very nice way, I said, let me give you a hand here because... The Bible is very specific on who Jesus died for. Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 28, gives you very specifically who he died for. Had he died for everyone, everyone would be saved. And I'll guarantee you, everyone's not saved. Now, his blood was sufficient to cover the sins of the entire world. Okay, but he knew beforehand who would receive it, who would reject it. And that's why he had gone and he had built us a mansion for those of us that were coming home someday. But he didn't die for everyone. Had he died for everyone, everyone would be saved. And that's just like people that believe you could lose your salvation. If you could lose it, you would lose it. All it would take is a sin. Amen? Amen. So here we said, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto <coughs> you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Well, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints is what we have today, what, you're, what I'm preaching to you now. And the common salvation is simply everybody gets saved in the same way, by being born again. You, you repent of your sins, you call upon the name of the Lord. And that's called the common salvation. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels that kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness into the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities above them, in liking manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Now, fornication and inhospitality are not the same thing. Uh, you will see in a lot of your New Age perversions of the Bible, they've changed that. They say that uh, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for inhospitality because they, they were not hospitable. They didn't take in strangers. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No place in Scripture does that say. Does it even... In any way does it ever even uh, suggest such a thing. But that's the New Age uh, uh, perversions, the, the homosexual Bibles that they have out today. Over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, all those filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignity. By the way, dignities here he's speaking of are angels angels. But uh, what is a dignitary? A dignitary is someone who conducts themselves with dignity, you see. And when, what happens today, people don't, don't understand this. When they tell you, well, now I know that man is not a very nice man. He's a pretty wicked, evil man, but you have to respect his office. No, you don't. No, you don't. If he's defiled that office, you don't re respect an office that's been defiled. That's why our, our court, they, what they call the Supreme Court, is they're only supreme in their sin and their rebellion against God. Pastors in this country, had they had the courage to stand up and be men, should have gone in in 1962 when that Supreme Court made themselves to be God and said, we're going to kick God's not allowed in the schools anymore. 
But God left. He didn't come back. But you know who did? That door was left open. And all you have to do is take a look at the public fool system today to know that it's turned into great gates of hell. Right? And then when that court decided that they would take what God was said was unlawful, and they would make killing children, destroying the image of God, okay? Uh, when they would do that, when they would transgress God's dominion, remember when God gave us the, the institution of biblical law, he gave man dominion over the environment, but he kept dominion of man for himself. That belongs only to him. But that court said, no, we are, we're going to overrule God. If you will purchase with mammon a license, we will give you the permission to destroy the image of God. Well, they were supreme only in their sin and only uh, in their treason against God in America. And I'll tell you who else was guilty of the treason. The pastors in this land should have had the courage and the backbone and intestinal fortitude to be men. And they should have marched in Washington, D.C., and they should have put that ungodly entity on trial for treason against God and country. But they did not have the guts, and that's why we have 100 million dead American children today. But anyhow, he goes on to say, <clears throat> Likewise also, you filthy dreamers, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. And Michael the archangel, when he contended with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, first not against him a rallying accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. What did Michael do? He did like you do in the military. In the military, if you have a, an officer over you, a superior officer, and he is violating the uh, conduct of military law, and he won't listen to you, you, you go to his superior. And that's what Michael did here. Michael, why should I have to fight with Satan? Okay? Uh, so he just said, the Lord rebuked you. Now, are you going to stand against God? No, you ain't going to stand against God, right? God's got Satan on a short change. But they speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know, naturally, remember what I just said? Those women that were having sex with each other yeah. were having sex with the lion with a beast. Here's what it says. As brute beasts, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. It's a woman to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. I, I just remember something that I, uh, one time I, I was out preaching recently, in front of the abortion mill, and this real chubby pro-death woman came up to me. Thought she had a vile mouth, vile mouth, but she was wearing a miniskirt. I mean, a really miniskirt, like all the way up to here. I mean, I mean, right up all the way up high. And so she was using foul language and running her mouth. So I just listened to her, and then when she was finished, I said, "You know something? I've got nicer legs than you do." So I said. And uh, you, you want to see the look on her face. She, she didn't know what to say. She just shut up and she had the strangest look and turned around and walked away. And uh, these people aren't very smart to tell you the truth. But it made me think about that when I see the beasts here. Because I could have said, you're quite a beast, but I didn't. Woe to them, for they had gone in the way of Cain and had ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds and trees, whose fruit withereth. Without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out. These are not good characteristics, folks. Uh, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is received the blackness and darkness forever. And Enoch also, the 70th from Adam, prophesied to these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. That was the first prophecy of men in the Scripture, right there. The very first prophecy. That prophecy is over 5,000 years old. To execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, these are murmurers and complainers walking after their own lusts, and their mouths speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration. 
because of advantage. In other words, Obama has tried to purge our military of every uh, ad honorable officer, high-ranking officers, 11 four-star generals, over 260 very high-ranking officers he's purged. Anyone whose uh, loyalty was towards God, the, the country, constitution, and the people, he's purged. He wants bootlickers. He did he, he followed Adolf Hitler's book, those that would, whose loyalty is only to der Führer, and that's what we have there, and that's what he's talking about here, because of the admiration, because of their advantage. They sold their very souls. Now, if we go over to, I want to go back to Leviticus chapter 20. In Leviticus chapter 20, what we talked about, the spirit of the law, versus the uh, letter. Or did I already read that? No. No. In Leviticus 20, verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers, Roy, could you give me a bottle of water? Of the strangers who sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among the people, because he hath given of his seed to Moloch to defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name. You understand, he's talking about killing the children, offering up the children like they do here in America all the time. That's why we, we stand out there and we fight <coughs> all of these years. We've saved over 23,000 babies. But it would have stopped on the first day. The first day if the pastors had had the courage to stand up and be men. If the pastors had had the heart. And, you know, you've got to ex accept it. No place has our Lord been more dishonored than from the pulpits, folks. And... Uh, I've, had so, I've heard so many pastors try to justify not having courage. And the vast majority of them today. And I'm going to tell you this, these people that stay in these churches with these pre preachers that are not courageous, these preachers that are not bold, these preachers that are effeminate, they're going to find out things that, uh, that when, when it comes down between them and their congregation, they'll sell their congregation out in a heartbeat. That's why you have these uh, credential, these famous credentialed preachers out there today who have, who have uh, signed their allegiance to FEMA, have agreed in FEMA that uh, they will preach, they will literally lie to the people, they will preach to their people that uh, Romans 13 demands that they preach that the people must in every way obey the government on every level. And that's not what Romans 13 says, far from it. But they've agreed to that. And they've actually agreed, they're actually told when they go to these female indoctrinations, you do not tell, you do not tell uh, your congregation where you've been. You don't even tell them you've ever been here. And if they ask about it, tell them no. That's what they do. And a number of these preachers have gotten Cold feet and couldn't take it. They just, their conscience wouldn't love them. They'd come on, they spilled the beans. On the others there. But anyhow, he says, where'd I leave off? Okay. Oh. Uh, and if the people of the land do anyway hide their eyes from the man who he giveth his seed to Moloch and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family, and will cut him off. It will, and all that go whoring after him to commit order with Moloch from among the people. You see, what they did is they sacrificed the children. You have this huge statue, and it would have metal made out of metal, and it would be heated up, and they would take the babies to the top, and they would let them slide down, and they would burn. And the idea was, the more pain that the child suffered, the greater pleasure that their parents would receive having sexual 
and their sexual encounters. This, this was the deal that they, they made with Moloch. That was the idea. And, and today, basically, a whole, one of the reasons a whole lot of these uh, women kill their babies is, uh, you know, just for reasons of um, convenience. I had one young girl actually tell me she had killed six. She didn't say, I've had six abortions. She said, I've killed six babies. This will be the seventh one, and I have the right to do that. And she said, I don't want stretch marks. Now, that's a cold-hearted, wicked, wicked little whore. Okay, and that's what she was. She wasn't married. She's just a cold-hearted. But that today, uh, and, and so many of the kids today that, that don't, they don't understand. They're hard-hearted today. Why? Well, the public fool system God has left there has become great gates of hell. But he's telling you here, he said that the, the people, the people when they pretend like there's nothing wrong or they pretend that they don't know that these people had killed their babies, uh, when, they, when they say, are you going to repent of that sin? They fail to do that. Here's what he says. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family. God, I want to remind you again, is immutable. He doesn't change. He never changes. So his laws are the same today as forever. And you know someone that's gone out and had that baby or killed that child, you tell them you need to repent of that. You just sinned mightily against God. And if you fail to do that, well, what's the saying in Ezekiel chapter 3? To warn the wicked. And if you warn the wicked and they continue in their sin, their blood's on them. Our job is to warn them. If we fail to warn them, that blood's on us too. Amen? Amen. So he says this, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards, to go whoring after them, I will even set my face against the soul that will cut them off from among his people. This here is supposed to be a church in Akron, in Silver Lake, and uh, they're in there praying to their shamans, right there. This is what's happening today. See, this is, God is showing you every day, he's even putting it on the front page of the newspapers, for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, but it goes over the heads of the vast majority of people. The vast majority of people are clueless. I finally found myself agreeing the other day. <laughs> Uh, with Bill O'Reilly. And, uh, you know, because a lot of things I don't agree with O'Reilly. He should stay away from the Bible because he is biblically illiterate. He, but he made, he made a statement talking about uh, why the American people do things, like why they elected Obama the second time, and why they do things. And he said, I've thought about this and I've pondered this, and I can't understand why. Uh, he was taking, um, he was asking people, the, they took a poll to find out what direction the country is going. And uh, almost 70% of the people say the country is going in the wrong direction. Right? And then they took another poll and say, uh, would you vote for a Republican or a Democrat? And the majority of the people said they vote for a Democrat. And O'Reilly says, the Democrats have brought this country in the wrong direction, have brought us to this, to this point. And he said, and I just, beyond me, I don't understand. And he said, I pondered this and I pondered this. And then also, uh, the other fellow in there, Krauthammer, the, Krauthammer Charles Krauthammer, <clears throat> these two finally agreed on something too. That was an amazing thing, the three of us agreeing on something. O'Reilly says, I've come to the conclusion that the American people are stupid. And Krauthammer said, I agree. And folks, I had to agree with them. The vast majority of people out there are dumber than rocks. They really are. Okay? Our young people. You know, when, when the media, when late night comedians make a living now off the ignorance of our children. O'Reilly was using uh, Harvard. They went and they were at Harvard. It was his school. And they were uh, questioning, taking uh, these these young girls, Harvard students, and they had they were totally oblivious. Some of the questions that they asked these people were unbelievable out there on the campuses. 
one of the questions they were asking them was, if Obama was to run again, should he uh, keep Dan Quayle as his vice president? And most of these girls said, yeah, we are here to keep Dan Quayle. I'm not kidding you, okay? Then they asked them, which body of water <coughs> borders the east coast of the United States? Which body of water? And they, they answered, most of them answered Lake Erie. Huh. <laughs> Lake Erie, okay? So, you know, they, they get a little confused with north and east. Then they asked them what continent we lived on. Now, now, these are kids that are going to, remember what Karl Marx said? They must never know they're being indoctrinated. They must always think they're being educated. Should they realize they're being indoctrinated, we'll lose them. So, these kids think they're getting an education. They're coming out of school. They're spending thousands of daddy's dollars coming out of school. And they ask them which continent we live in. And the majority of them said Central America. And when uh, Waters asked them, why would you say Central America? And the majority of them said Canada is North America, Colombia is South America, and we're in between. I'm not kidding you, okay? This is what you spend thousands of dollars to find out, okay? Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, and boy, I'm going to tell you. And, you know, it's, it's pitiful that the late night comedians make a living off of publicizing the stupidity of our young people. But anyhow, we go on to say, uh, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a-whoring after them. I will even set my face against his soul. I will cut him off from amongst the people. Sanctify yourself, therefore, and be ye holy. For I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes and do them. And I am the Lord which sanctify you. For everyone that curses his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He that curses his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. And the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death, for blood shall be upon them. And if a man shall lie with his daughter in the law, both of them shall surely be put to death, for they have wrought confusion, and their blood shall be upon them. If a man shall lie with mankind as he hath lieth with a woman, both of them shall have committed an abominable, and they shall be surely be put to death, and the blood shall be upon them. And if a man shall take a wife and her mother in his wickedness, they shall be burnt with fire, both he and they, and there is be no wickedness among them. And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach unto any beast, and lie down thereon, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast, and thou shalt surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, to see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness, he shall bear his iniquity. And if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness, and shall uncover her nakedness, he hath discovered her fountain, and she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood, both of them shall be cut off from among the people. And thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, nor thy father's sister, for the uncovered is near kin, and they shall bear the iniquity. And if a man shall lie with his uncle's wife, he hath uncovered his uncle's nakedness, they shall bear their sin, and they shall die childless. And if a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing, he hath uncovered his brother's nakedness, they shall be childless. And I just want to go to... to Verse 27, because of time. And, and a man or, or also a woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, and their blood shall be upon them. Well, the next three verses you see refers to, going back to verse 13, of a man shall lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman. 
Uh, three places in scripture, homosexuals are referred to as dogs. Now, uh, dogs were despised among the Jews. Lions were held up uh, with great admiration, but dogs were despised. And if you go over to Deuteronomy 23, for example, in Deuteronomy 23, verses 17 or 18, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abominations unto the Lord thy God. So what he's telling you, he's referring to uh, a homosexual as a dog, as a dog, okay? And that you, they could not, their money that they made off their sin could not be brought into the house of God. And then if you try to go over to Philippians chapter 3, in the Philippians chapter 3, in verse uh, 1 and 2, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it is not grievous, but it is for your sake. Beware of dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of the concession. Concession were the Judaizers. Uh, the dogs were homosexuals. He's telling you, beware of the homosexuals. And then, one last time over in Revelation chapter 22, in verse 15 he says, he's talking about uh, the New Jerusalem, where we will be, where the Christians will be. But he says, well, and behold I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life. They may enter in through the gates into the city, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Well, uh, folks, that refers to that sin, the Obama sin, the one that he tries to push upon people, the sin of Sodom. Remember, God does not change. And what we just read here. So, in the Old Testament, under the letter of the law, those acts that are openly committed today were seen to be so vile by God. How do you think he's going to treat those that have rejected Calvary, have rejected the Lord Jesus? Well, I'm going to tell you, they're in for an extremely rude awakening. And they're in for an extremely hot eternity. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. We're going to take up an offering now. So.